Okay, everybody, settle down. Testing, testing. All right, so it's come to my attention this channel's picked up a few more viewers. Now, the creators of Robot Cantina would like me to read a prepared statement. Oh, um, let's see now. Um, well, it says thank you. Wow, 50,000 subs in two weeks. I can't thank you folks enough. It truly is an amazing show of support. If you're new to this channel, this is a great time to click on subscribe and join the madness. Now, we do try to read all your comments, and please keep them coming. We really appreciate them. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Now, if you recall in the last video, we took our street legal go-kart for its first test drive. And overall, I think the car performed exceptionally well. Yeah, it needs some improvements, but keep in mind that was the first time the car was ever driven. Now, before we start making engine modifications, let's go ahead and take a look at optimizing the transmission ratios for the larger motor. Sprockets! So the sprocket over on the right is the 28 tooth sprocket we used in the previous video. It had a calculated top speed of 46 miles per hour or 74 kph. We ended up going 50 miles per hour with that combo. <laughs> so much for the math. This sprocket has a calculated top speed of 55 miles per hour or 88 kph. The next sprocket has a calculated top speed of 60 miles per hour or 96 kph. And this last sprocket has a calculated top speed of 65 miles per hour, or 104 kph. Now this sprocket is going to be pushing the limits, but we have it just in case. The new sprockets I ordered have a narrow hub, and this was completely unexpected, so now we have to machine a new spacer to accommodate the difference in sizes. If you recall from episode 12, we built this heavy duty chain slack adjuster, so the bushing or spacer we need to make goes right about here. The problem with the chain slack adjuster is, it was built on the fly, so there are no drawings or prints or whatever. This custom made part was built to fit a certain way and basically it's a complete unknown as far as any critical dimensions go. It's not unusual, and it's actually more common for a fabricator to build something that looks and fits perfect without ever measuring anything other than centers. So making an updated replacement part takes some understanding of how it all fits together. And with a pen and calculator, it's possible to engineer a new part, just like the CAD people do, but without the CAD. So it looks like we're going to need a new spacer that's 18.15 millimeter, which is about as close to a random dimension as you can get. Seventeen point nine three millimeter. Eh, that's good enough. That should give us some wiggle room. In order to change the sprockets, we'll need to cut a special length chain for each sprocket combo. Now, someone pointed out in the comment section that the chain I'm using is not suitable for this application. And thanks for the heads up. I went ahead and ordered some O-ring chain, and man, that stuff's expensive. So for now, we're going to be using the wrong chain until we can settle on the right sprocket combo. Then we'll go ahead and use the O-ring chain. Okay, so now we have all the sprockets and chains prepped, let's go ahead and swap in the 23 tooth combo and then we can head over to the Hillbilly Proving Grounds and see what this car can do. It took a little bit longer than expected to swap out the sprockets, but overall it was a simple job. Now previously we would load the car onto a tow dolly and haul it over to the hillbilly proving grounds. This time around we felt the car could make the trip under its own power. And thus we set out on our journey. Well that was easy. Now laugh all you want, but there's nothing like driving a car at wide open throttle from point A to point B. Try that in a Hellcat and you'll be going to the pokey. Alright, well here's a quick recap of the Hillbilly Proving Grounds for all the new people. We start out on a country road course, now this meanders through some twisties, some ups and downs. It's a good workout for the whole car. Next we tackle Boot Hill. This long uphill grade was a challenge for the former 212cc engine. Now how will the 420 fare? We'll find out. Once we reach the top of Boot Hill, the road opens up into the Badlands. 
That is nothing but cornfields and flat open roads. Here we put the pedal to the metal and give it all it's got. Top speed's our goal. Once we get the car sorted out on the road course, it's time to take it to the drag strip. How fast can this car accelerate from 0 to 30? Well, that's anyone's guess. All right, well, let's get the car prepped. Someone commented that perhaps they should start a GoFundMe page to raise enough money to buy a window cleaner. But that's not necessary. We were able to purchase a professional window cleaning kit from a local street vendor. Hmm, I always thought Windex was blue. Alright, why say we take this show on the road? Alright, well let's see how we did. To begin with, we're throwing in the stats from the 28 tooth sprocket from the last video. Now keep in mind this sprocket was not tested on the official Hillbilly Proving Grounds, instead it was tested on similar roads. The 28 tooth sprocket would pretty much max out at 50 miles per hour no matter what the situation. The 23 tooth sprocket did a respectable 51 miles per hour and the car wasn't struggling at all. The 21 tooth sprocket did a little bit better at 53 miles per hour. Boot Hill was a surprise. The 28 tooth sprocket climbed a similar hill at 49 miles per hour. Now with the 23 tooth sprocket we were going 51 miles per hour at the base of the hill and by the time we got to the summit the speed dropped down to 42 miles per hour. So the problem isn't necessarily the sprocket, it's the driver. 
I had to lift off the throttle while climbing boot hill because I was going way too fast around the bend near the summit. Again, with the 21 tooth sprocket, the car was going a brisk 53 miles per hour at the base, and by the time I reached the summit, I was going way too fast and I had to lift off the throttle. <laughs> Looks like our street legal go kart has finally conquered Boot Hill. Now, over in the Badlands, the 28 tooth sprocket did 50 miles per hour on an equivalent stretch of road. The 23 tooth sprocket did an impressive 58 miles per hour with the pedal to the metal. Now, here's where things get a little bit sketchy. While the 21 tooth sprocket managed to creep the car up to 59 miles per hour, the car was struggling. Any sort of wind gust would slow us down, and generally speaking, the sprocket seemed borderline and probably isn't a good choice for overall high speed performance. But then again, you can't ignore it was the fastest. And I'll let you guys in on a little secret. We unofficially saw 62 miles per hour from this sprocket on the way home from the Hillbilly Proving Grounds. Now let's look at 0 to 30 times. On our first road test we did 0 to 30 in 13 seconds and that was actually pretty good compared to the 212cc engine. Now over on the drag strip portion of the Hillbilly Proving Grounds, the 23 tooth sprocket did an amazing 11 second run. And so did the 21 tooth. Now keep in mind this is the Hillbilly Proving Grounds and we're using a kitchen timer to clock these runs. So maybe there's a margin of error? So today's fuel economy data is interesting and let's take a closer look. But before we do that, I'd like to remind folks the goal of this project is to see how fast we can get our street legal go-kart to go with a cement mixer engine. And fuel economy is not something we're overly concerned about. Anyway, there will be times when it goes up and it will also go down. We literally drive this car at wide open throttle all the time. I reckon the fuel economy data would be much better than what I'm reporting if the car was driven at part throttle. Alright, well let's take a look. As you may know from the previous video, the 28 tooth sprocket got us 35 miles to the gallon, and that's not bad, but it's not good either. Now the 23 tooth sprocket seemed to be where the engine wants to be as, as far as fuel economy goes, and it shows in the numbers. The 21 tooth sprocket we saw a decline in mileage, most likely that's due to the engine working hard all the time. Not only does this show in the fuel economy data, but I also noticed the cylinder head temperature was noticeably higher. So it looks like as we move forward with this project, we'll be sticking with the 21 tooth sprocket. Now it's not 100% ideal, but I feel it's something we can grow into. You folks might have noticed that we skipped this sprocket, and well, given the results of the 21 tooth sprocket, we felt the engine just doesn't have enough power to fully optimize this sprocket. But rest assured, sometime in the future we will be getting back to this one. So a viewer requested that I point a camera at the CVT drive and video what happens when I shift the 5 speed transmission. Now I apologize for the camera angle, but this was the only solid spot on the car I could mount the camera to. Let's have a look. Now first we'll show you a slow shift and you can see how the CVT system almost completely resets. This is what a normal shift looks like. Hey, if you made it this far, you must have liked the video. 
do me a favor and click on the like button. We have many more videos on the way and you don't want to miss any of them. So now would be a good time to click on the subscribe button. And don't forget to click on the notification bell. Thanks for watching and until next time.